You're watching Reptile Mountain TV. Hey guys, welcome back to Reptile Mountain TV. I'm TC. This is Zion, one of my T positive um, caramel blue tongue skinks. Isn't he just beautiful? Oh, I hope you're a she, actually. Hasn't dropped sperm plugs. All my other males have. Um, really hoping this one has uh, is a girl. Kind of hoping you're a girl. He do, uh, sh Zion does look uh, like mom and dad, so that was easy to decipher. But anyway, this is uh, Zion, and we uh, want to talk to you. He's going to do nothing, and I'm going to talk um, about... The idea of intentional enrichment for your skinks. So, in the when I was a, a zookeeper, holy moly, was the term enrichment a buzz word? In fact, you couldn't maybe you couldn't even have a conversation with a mammal keeper without the term enrichment uh, getting mentioned probably three times. In fact, if they didn't, I was worried that the keeper itself themselves was sick <laughs> because they were just loving this enrichment. And you'll see it if you go to a zoo. You'll see like an ice cube with toys frozen in it or something for the polar bear. You'll see um, a pumpkin or something floating in the pool for the tigers. You'll see um, elephants doing a lot of little different things with their trunks and the keepers working with them to keep their brains going because enrichment is intentionally to desi designed to stimulate psychologi psychologically stimulate the animal so that their lives in captivity mimic that of the wild because in the wild animals are constantly um, thinking about survival really um, for the most part. Very little, uh, very rarely would you think that um, you go out to the wild and here's a skink sitting on a rock pondering its own existence. However, they are going to be rooting around looking for food and that's where their nature of inquisitiveness comes because of their little scavenger type behavior of rooting through things to discover things to eat and places to be safe and secure and um, also to avoid predation. So, um, Enrichment's important. Um, now, intentional enrichment um, is, is cool, and, it, and it's kind of like icing on the cake for uh, keeping reptiles. It's not necessarily necessary um, for all reptiles. Um, it may be for some reptiles, and you might notice some animals seem to have that behavioral need for more um, psychological stimulation and enrichment and then it does become a need but for the most part they're probably chill just as is but I like to do a little bit more than uh, than the standard that doesn't make me better or anything it just makes me do it what it makes me feel good because it's kind of all about me which is honest I'm just being honest with you so anyway let's talk about enrichment one way I enrich my skinks is I will take them out of their enclosure this is the simplest way take them out handle them let them smell some new smells let them see some new things um, another way just simply coming into the skink room and like I'm here in the skink room filming this video and there is a skink right now besides this one that is getting very much entertained and it's this little guy right here you can see that little guy he's been spying on us the whole time and um, so he's actually getting entertained he's watching a filming how about that? And I'm going to later, I'm going to sign an autograph for him. But, uh, boy, that was corny. Oh. Anyway, other ways that you can enrich them is to, with scents. Scenting is one of the things we did in the reptile house to do enrichment. Of course, cage rearrangement, also enrichment. But scenting and toys. You know, this the skink's not going to go, oh, boy, I've got a toy corn. Um, but I went to the dollar store, I bought some toys to replace the old ones. And if you put a little scent on this and put this in their cage and then take it out and put a different one in each day, um, they're going to check it out and go, wow, that's neat. I have a new smell and I have a new sight. Um, another way to do it, uh, I got some of these wiffle balls and you can, uh, you can take, what I do is I'll take that cat food. There's like a little fatty gel stuff that they seem to love that's kind of around the rim. And I'll put that on the inside of this and they'll sniff it and chase, chase it around in their cage. Um, and, and that's also very enriching. Um, cage decor is enriching to an extent, but not unless you rearrange it often. And I mean often, otherwise it's just there and it's another part of their life. Um, 
cage size does not equate to enrichment unless we're talking incredibly large like 20 feet by 20 feet outdoors because a bigger box is just a bigger box it's what you do inside that box because the, this little skink they can investigate because um, I see a lot of honestly I see a lot of folks on Facebook say these animals are so inquisitive they need bigger caging bigger caging isn't gonna do it for them um, uh, it's what you do inside the cage, what you put inside the cage, and how you change things up, how you interact with the animal, and what's new for the animal each day. It's about being new. It's not about size. Um, and so that, that's just one thing I wanted to point out. Um, a large cage, sure, a huge cage can be new each day inside, but these um, kind of 40-gallon breeder-sized enclosures or even a CB70 or a V70 tub, it can also be new each day. It's what's new inside the enclosure, not necessarily the size, unless the enclosure is so large that the animal can travel and things are new. And I mean literally travel, because otherwise if the skin can do a lap around the cage in a day, it's got it figured out, it's not new anymore. So anyway, I wanted to put that out there. But enrichment, it, it's, it's cool. And one of the things about enrichment that I like is that it gives me uh, an opportunity to interact with my skink other than for feeding and poop cleaning. So it's, it's a, another fun inter interaction with my animal. Thanks for watching Reptile Mountain TV. Please like, comment, subscribe, or share.